I'm Ian Rush and you're watching the Red Men TV. Anyway, yeah, we're back for a brand new season of Red Men TV. Liverpool are facing off against Southampton. This is the uncensored match. Build up show, Chris. Yes, Paul. Scout Hampton. No beds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny that, isn't it? Because cause in case you haven't noticed, Liverpool have signed a few players from, from Southampton. Really? Yeah, that's... and then Should but, I talk about that all summer? So what they've done... And, and, and else, Stephen Gerrard fell over last season. Really? No, yeah, I mean, believe have, it or not... Are there people out there who have changed their name to Slippy G on YouTube? <laughs> anyway, it's a brand new season. Last season's gone. We, we wish it could have been better. Like my winning the Premier League title, but we didn't. Anyway, new season, new players, some of them from Southampton. Um, <laughs> um, I actually, Jack, I wouldn't expect, well, obviously, Lallana's going to be injured, Ricky Lambert, I suspect he'll start on the bench either way. Doesn't look like they're going to they're gonna figure it. Dejan Lovren, though, probably will, and he's looked pretty good in what we've seen him so far. I thought in his non competitive debut, he was outstanding, particularly the first half, I thought he really stood out, so he'll, he'll definitely be in that team, I should think. Um, fitness providing, and we'll we'll get a look at Lambert as well at some point in the game. He'll come on and face his former team, and um, let's hope he scores the goal we're waiting for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice to see. Absolutely. I mean, we're hoping we're hoping that he's got all of that sort of bad form out of the out of his system in pre season. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about Liverpool in a sec. The, beauty, I mean, the beauty about it, if, if I just interrupt, is that we're not desperate for him to be successful like we were, like with Peter Crouch, yeah. who didn't score for like three months and we were all, you know, desperate that he would, would get on the score sheet. It, it can take his time, it doesn't yeah. matter, does it? Well, it's interesting. In fact, actually, I was going to come to this later, but we can come to this now, because um, why not? Brendan Rodgers was talking about him in the post-match press conference after Dortmund and um, he actually got quite spiky when asked about his performances and his search for a goal so I'll tell you what we're going to do, let's go to that clip now. We only saw a few minutes from Ricky Lambert today, he's still looking for his first goal in a Liverpool shirt and do you think the, sort of the fact that he, he desperately is looking to score his first goal and you made a phrase for his last season about the Liverpool shirt being a heavy shirt no, oh, don't worry about that, Eric. Yeah. Don't put pressure on Ricky Lambert to get goals. Ricky Lambert's been brought in here, you know, to be a very valuable member of our squad. You know, he's obviously been handed probably more game time in pre-season because we were still looking for one or two other things. But he's, um, he, I'm so happy I've got him here. You know, he's a good guy. He works very, very hard. And his role will become more prominent throughout the season as we play. And uh, and he's proven all his career. He's got goals, whatever level he's played at. You know, he came on for international, he gets goals. So it's happened in the last couple of seasons in the Premier League, he gets goals. So uh, so there's no need for him to be under any pressure. He needs to come in at 32 years of age, contribute to the history of this club, a big supporter of the club. But, He's past that now. You know, he's, he's here to do a job. I trust him to do the job, and, and he will do a great job for us. So, but basically, obviously, the, 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 the gist of it has been, Brendan Rodgers just saying, there's no pressure on Ricky Lambert to score goals, and, and I think the important thing there is that, I mean, because he's talking about, over the full course of the season, we'll see Ricky Lambert's worth. I think we will, yeah. I think he'll, he'll definitely add something to the squad. For me, as a Liverpool fan, I want other Liverpool fans to give him the time. Um, to get into his groove and to get a few goals because this is a guy who, who will who loves our club as much as any of us yeah. as much as any of us fans and we need to give him time to, to settle in and stuff and not jump on his back early yeah. but he's not cost us a great amount of money I think he can definitely add something to our squad and, yeah. and maybe we will only see the worth later on in the season and that's fine yeah. and it's, I mean the fact of the matter is Jack, it's clear Daniel Sturridge is our best centre forward yeah. but, and it's it's just a shame, and again, it's what Brendan Rodgers says there, is that we shouldn't have seen as much of Lambert in pre-season. Sturridge should have been available for more of that, but for injuries, and because of that... Berini as well. Yeah, and Berini as yeah. well. Yeah. So Lambert's kind of been dropped in at the deep end, and as such, I've had people saying, what, how, how, did, how did signing Lambert improve upon Iago Aspas? 
well, let's probably wait for him to play a competitive game and see how he fares over the course of a whole season before we start to make stupid judgments like Iago Aspas is better than him. Because, to be honest, just by turning up and being Ricky Lambert and not Iago Aspas well, already makes him better compare, than Iago Aspas. Compare the season in the last full season they played in the Premiership. And this Who is would you rather have? Well, Aspas, it, or? Exactly. And you look at it like Premier League teams of the year, like statistically, and, 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 and stats and, and fantasy teams and all that. <laughs> which is no great, you know, I understand this is not how teams are built. But Ricky Lambert is was as good a value as anyone in that in that yeah. league last season. He's a scouser. Why would he not be playing for Liverpool? I think another thing to pick out from Rogers' comments that we've just seen is the the sort of that infers that he's got an awful lot of faith in the other players in his squad, as we've talked about throughout the week, to step up and provide more goals. Yeah. We can expect more from Coutinho, Sterling, Henderson. All of them should be but scoring more. It, it, it's clear, isn't it? It's like, I mean, that we've not spent, spent £4 million pounds on a 32-year-old centre-forward as a replacement for Luis Suarez. And yet people... You so hope. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think that's what Brendan Rodgers basically alluding to. It's like, don't there's no need to pile tons of pressure on him because he's a, he's a four million pound option. You know, if we'd spend forty million, if we'd done thirty five million pounds on him, like we've been known to do for <laughs> big barely centre forwards, I could understand a little bit of a little bit of pressure around it. But there should be none on Ricky Lambert at all. We bought him as a squad player, haven't we? Someone will give us something a little bit different in certain games, and maybe he'd be quite useful in Europe as well. Uh, and for four million pounds, you know, you can't get better. Than that, can you? I don't even think he's an impact player, though. I think he's just a player to rest on other players, an option so that he can come on the field and make up the numbers and rest other players. I, don't, I think he's being a bit disrespectful. I think, I think, I think when you look at what he's got and what he brought to that Southampton team, he's he's a quality footballer. And and I think I don't want to over over egg it too much, but you look at I've already seen glimpses of what he's brought. He looks. He looks shit when people are playing three balls to him. Of course he does. But when you get the ball to him, I mean, look at Man City as yeah, a great example of it. This is just one little touch. I don't know if, I can't remember if it was for a goal, but he just plays a little ball inside. I think it might be to an eye or someone like that, or maybe Stevens. But it, that's what he, that's what he's going to be at his it, best. The, when he's at his best is when there are other players near him. Yeah. Yes, yeah, completely. We spoke. Th- <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, during whilst you were away, Paul, and we said, um, you know, the sort of game that's going to suit Joe Allen is probably also the similar sort of game that's going to suit um, Ricky Lambert when we're not making that rapid transition up the pitch when we're actually playing a higher three. And a bit. Lambert's got players near him, as you say, got support from the midfield. I think when we're trying to blaze up field really fast, there's, Lambert's not really got a position in that team. He's going to look out of place. The other thing we haven't seen, of course, is, is him playing with Lallana, because he obviously had a good partnership with yeah. Southampton, and we haven't had a chance to see that yet. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I, th- I, th- I can see him having a very good partnership with Daniel Sturridge as well. It's a different, look, it's a completely different front two parents to, to Suarez and Sturridge, which shouldn't really go without saying. But having someone there, because what you probably find is, Lambert would be drop, uh, dropping deep and looking to pick through balls. And if you're putting him in, if you've got players like Coutinho, Sterling, and Henderson or whatever in and around there as well, they're all just going to be going in, going and beyond. And that's the, and that's what I saw Ricky Lambert do for Southampton so often. It's just he was such a linchpin to their attack. He's a lot more cultured again than people give. He's not at times he wasn't that nine. He was that nine and a half false false nine type. Um, I, I think you know he's got. He's got bags of ability, and I think I think that's best Brendan Rodgers. We'll see that in the fullness of time. Big question though, and any Southampton fans watching as well, I want to know your thoughts on this. How will Ricky? What will Ricky Lambert do if he scores in this game? Because right. well, that, that's what I mean. Because he's got to show. Does he do the normal like show respect to his previous clubs, which generally speaking is a load of bollocks, isn't it? Like I mean, unless you've got like. Incredible history with these teams, which I suppose it may be a case with Southampton, but also it's his boiled team. It would be his first goal. It's the last minute of the the game, it's nil nil, and he scores in the cup. What's he going to do? Go. <laughs> I, I, I I think he's going to. I think he's going to go. No, I will be dead for sure. When it actually happens, we'll find him on like row fifteen of the cop naked, <laughs> <laughs> crowd surfing, crowd surfing down. <laughs> um, you might find that in that case, he would 
be over with the Southampton fans towards the end, giving them a bit of applause. And yeah, yeah. I, my understanding is he's very much gone with their bless, blessing, and they all understand his move. As opposed to Lallana, who had to take out yes. a full page out there to say soz. Um, <laughs> speaking about Southampton, then I mean, Jack, here, this is a big, this is a, a big test for Southampton. You know, they've been asset what, stripped. Name, naming the team. Yeah. yeah, finding sufficient. I mean, they're not they're not quite a Blackpool, are they? But no. hey, they're really strong in goalkeeper, though. Yeah, they are strength in depth in the goalkeeping department. <laughs> Much strength in depth. Um, but There's, look, Cummins a, a good manager and obviously uh, carries a, carries a lot of weight behind him as well. They've still got some good players. They've there. got some good players. Yeah, they have. They've got. Um, if Morgan Snyderland's head is in the right place, James Ward Prowse is an excellent young player as well, and he'll. They'll look to him this season to be one of their key players, and I think he, 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 he. I mean, he played a lot of football last season, but I think he's probably ready to make that step up and be a more senior player. And he, he's got an awful lot about him, and he'll be looking to break into the international setup, I'd imagine, in the next two seasons. You know, this season, if you like. Um, so that you know, there are still some good things there, um, and I don't think we should be. Uh, it'd be very easy to create a narrative whereby we take everything for granted because people expect us to go there and win but we, we need to show them a lot of respect as well mm-hmm. yeah I mean it's going to be interesting. I mean there's a case to be made we know what Southampton are they, they, they play good football but they, they are in a known quantity I don't think we know anything about them do we? No. they've lost most of their defence they've lost most of their attack you know we just we've, they've got a different manager we just have no clue what they're going to be like who's he got up front who's left Rodriguez is still there is he still injured he's still injured, injured Seriously, I, I, this this is what I mean. Like, uh, Ben, yeah, Coleman brought a player called Pele with him from Twente. Good knowledge, Ben. Thanks very much. <laughs> Get in. Getting on a bit though. <laughs> ben from the sidelines. Good shot, we. Any good? Uh, scored like fifty-five in sixty-eight games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Why were we not in the? You know that raid we've done on Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's any good. So I've got a few weeks left. Ian here, here taking notes in the stand, like the, the, the Southampton chairs. Oh, we just fuck off. Just, <laughs> the biggest mistake I ever get, did was giving Ian here his mobile number. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you're right, you're absolutely. But the players that are left in that squad have got something to prove as well, because everybody's writing them off. I've, I've seen a few conversations on Twitter and even on articles about them going down. Do you know what I mean? And people think that they're going to go down and stuff. And the players in that squad will be looking around at the beginning of the season going, what the fuck did they know? You know what I mean? They'll have a lot to prove, especially early on in the season. Yeah, do you think? They're saying it to an empty, an empty changing room, like. <laughs> but yeah, the, other, <laughs> the danger is, I suppose, that. You've got players in that team who might be, might be looking at the situation as three games before deadline day as well to prove their worth and why why haven't I been picked up yet in a bigger team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morgan Snyderland just he's probably got like a, a free Morgan T-shirt or something like that. Like yeah. he, he now walks past him. <laughs> what did that say? Tell him what. Nah, I don't. Like <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I think would be it would be soft of us to be dismissive of them, but equally, you know, you'd like to think that they'll be uh, not having their the, the mass changes they've undergone. They'll be you'd like to think they'll be disjointed coming to Anfield, unless they come and I think and play ridiculous park the bus football, which is not outside of the realms of possibility because you know um, who's the number one keeper. That's a great question. Anyone? That- well, just forced them coming in. They've just, they just yeah. bought him. But the Forest was pretty fucking shit on last season, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's a good question. Why did you spend 10 million quid when you just had a fire sale on out? Well, it's out because, players? Because, yeah, well, because they've got cash burning a hole in their, in their ass pocket. The, the keeper wasn't was gonna... the place they needed players, <laughs> that's my point, mate. Like. <laughs> Maybe it's just like, well, no, look, this is definitely shown up. Maybe he's planning on playing two keepers. That's it. All right, so it's going to cost a lot of money to fix this, but... <laughs> that defence is sorted. Revolutionary. <laughs> They'll call it the Cumin manoeuvre. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, so maybe he's actually he's, he's seen us play Dortmund and gone, yeah, we're gonna need more than Boris to stop this shit going. <laughs> he was there. He was there yeah, watching, no. and he, he, he went was, white. Yeah, he, at the end of the game, he was white. in his chair <laughs> next to Sammy Lee. Yeah. Um, so let's move on from that. Because I, I do feel again that these are all going to come back to haunt us if Southampton turn it on big time at the weekend. Glenn Johnson, or is it John Glenson, Chris? 
mainly, for the most part, it's John Benson. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who are new to Red Men TV, there's a theory that basically Glenn Johnson was kidnapped at some point in the last 18 months and replaced by an evil shit at football clone known as John Glenson. Um, he's, we saw signs of Glenn in Dortmund um, against Dortmund, I should say, but uh, maybe just it's, over in Dortmund. He's been it. spotted <laughs> over in Dortmund. I don't think it's so much that he's been kidnapped. It's a bit like one of those people who's got someone else inside him, like in science fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You're still in there, you're still in there, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glenn, Glenn, come on. It's, it's Henderson, <laughs> come on, Glenn. <laughs> know you're there, I can see you, I can feel you. Come back to us. Fight against it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an episode, but like episode of Buffy when Giles gets turned into a demon. There you go. Again, if you're new to Red Pen TV, <laughs> expect pop culture references. We've not done our own pop culture references. <laughs> <Aging> <laughs> pop culture references. Not unlike ourselves. Um, yeah, Glenn Johnson, I mean, what I, I'm at the point with Glenn Johnson now where all I want to see from this season is like just be an average right back. I don't. I don't want it. I don't. Well, I want him. I want him to be fucking amazing, obviously. But what I have been so disappointed with him so consistently over the last year and a half that I just want him to be a useful squad member. And it's ridiculous because he's one of the highest wage earners at the club. He's supposed to be a senior professional. He's a, a an international or an English one, uh, which doesn't really count for as much as it used to. Um, but you know, is that? Just, I mean, is that bad? Is that is that bad that we have such lowered expectations of a man with his clear ability? I think so, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, he, the guy has got bags of ability yeah, and skill and he's just stopped is he in using the last year it on the pitch. Yeah, I believe so. So he, he's obviously, he may well have something to um, to do to put himself in the shot window. Well, he, to on. But he, I was thinking this, it's like, you know, is he ang angling for one last big move a la Ashley Cole? You know, could, he could get picked up by a big. There's big better club. ways than playing shit for eight. Well, no, no, but this is what this is what I'm saying. Is that I've been bothered about for the season ahead. Does he just go right? You know, we contract up at Liverpool. It's probably not going to get rid of. It's probably time to move on anyway. Do I play out of my skin for one last season, angle for a big move, or does he think, fuck it, I'll get a game in the MLS either way? No, I think yeah, it, he'll do like Xabi Alonso, play yeah. your heart out in the last season and uh, get a big move. It's a great out. Well, you look, the guy was in the middle of a title challenge last season. Was still shit. Yeah. Still stinking up. You think? Come on, like not thinking about the money and stuff. He would surely want to win the Premier League. Has he won it before? Probably. Yeah, probably with Chelsea. With Chelsea, yeah, you probably to want. You probably want to win the Premier League as a starter. <laughs> yeah. Come on, like, well, let me know give it all last season. Let me know your thoughts well. on this in the comments, please. What do you think? To, what do you think to Glenn Johnson? Because he's taken loads of stick, and look, I think I assume some of it a bit, a bit too much. Because when people start saying, "I hope he gets injured," you just are not better, basically. Uh, he, because he as long as you're Liverpool playing, he's different. Well, but, top let me know in the comments. Him as well, well may, maybe so. But I want to know, you know, should Liverpool keep faith with him? Has he? Does he have in him? To tear at his Liverpool career or his career in general, but how can he recapture the heights? Uh, let me know your thoughts on Johnson in the comments on these. Maybe, but he had no. I mean, it was like from Christmas. I felt I I thought the reason why he's been garbage here is because everyone else who plays right back in England who's English is either crap or injured. So he was a shoo-in for that World Cup side, let alone the unless squad. Unless he got injured. Unless he got injured. And I, I felt that that was way in the back of his mind. All he had to do was get there and then he'd be fine. But of course he's got no competition for that for that place and all that. And I don't know. I'm hoping that he gets that like Mankio coming in and hopefully if hopefully if we do sign Moreno and John Flanagan and all that and Enrique back to fitness that he has competition for places. It's gonna and be Ben Rush can go listen, get off the shelf. It's gonna be interesting. I, I think that Johnson is he's our right back. And he's, it's him, his position to lose. Yeah. But if uh, Brendan goes with Mankio right back and Johnson left back, then that may well change that. You know, if Mankio gets a little bit of a run mm -hmm. and establishes himself. Yeah, it's 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 a weird, it's a weird one. To be honest, and it, again, as with anything, only time is going to tell because. I'm not putting it, it's more in hope than an expectation at this point. I, I think we'd be, I'd be, I feel, I feel like the Chelsea fans are with Torres almost. You know, when you're watching a player and you're thinking, like, you just, you just don't seem to have it anymore. You know what I mean? Whatever it is that that needs to click for, to be, to make you a top class player. Long, long flowing hair. It does feel, yeah, it does. 
but it seems to have gone. It seems to have gone from from Glenn Johnson. That's I think that's actually quite sad because he's a he's clearly a talented player. He's, I mean, he's I think he's like twenty nine now, isn't yeah, he? So he's still got he's still got a few good years and a few good good years at the top left in him. Potentially, he's, you'd look at him and you'd think, looking at his attributes, he's a good enough player to adapt with age as well and become a different type of player. But um, no, I mean, it's not looking good, is it recently? No, not not. I need, I don't even think anymore. He's showing attributes that. You know he's crap at defending now, and he's crap at going forward. What attributes? He, what, what's he showing that he's got that now? Throw-ins. Throw-ins. Bang. There we go. That's all we need. That's, That's all we wanted. Uh, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Challenge of that. There's a reference. Um, hopefully, uh, Markovic should be around the squad. I mean, go back to Punch <laughs> Dortmund. Brendan Rodgers wasn't drawn that he will definitely be fit but I think he's suggesting he'll be in and around the squad which would be good because as discussed already I think our first 11 is great we've slightly improved the bench but it needs at least one of Lallana or Markovic on there to look I think a bit more a bit more dangerous Suso could be an improvement as well on the bench there could be again we don't know we, we need do. to see yeah, yeah. we do uh, okay trivia question time I know you've all been waiting with bated breath for these um, you've missed them summer haven't you out of ten, how much have you missed the trivia questions? Comment section underneath. Um, <laughs> random numbers on the comments. Out of forty-two, random numbers. Yeah. Uh, the first game of the season promises to be an interesting one with Liverpool having raided the Saints of some of their most prized assets in the Lanet, Lambert, and Lovren. But who was the last person to swap St Mary's for Anfield? I'll answer that in a couple of minutes of time. Um, lineups. Are we gonna? Are we gonna line up? That we. We're gonna I think, change I think four, two, three, one. Um, <coughs> I'd be happy if we played the same thing, but I really I'd, thought you'd had a stroke for no, I'd, be happy, <laughs> I'd be happy if we played the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Emery Chan keeps his position in midfield yeah. if he's if he's fit. Or does does Alan maybe come in for this game? I'd like to see Emery Chan play. Yeah. I think I think I don't think Alan's had a particularly good pre season. I think Emery Chan stood out, so on that basis, in yeah, I'd, I'd think the same team probably uh, started against Dortmund, um, and obviously that there's a dependence there on left back. You know whether Johnson plays there or he doesn't, but uh, and Mankia right back. If, uh, as I said before, I think Johnson will play right back if we've got a left back to play, but otherwise he'll play left and Mankia at right. But who knows? I'd be happy with the same selection as I in, in the Dortmund game, but I, I'm not bothered necessarily about it being called a four-two-three-one or a four-three-three. I yeah. think it can change throughout the game. I think that's the beauty of those players yeah. that we've yeah. got in there that you can't because because I I thought when that team lined up that it was Gerard Anker in midfield with Chan mm. and Henderson ahead of him, and then obviously Coutinho would stay on either side of Sturridge, and as you say, but it, it can be. There's no reason why it can't be. You don't, it doesn't take any massive. Shift of anything, you just yeah, you be a bit further up there, and you, you know, Coutinho be brilliant, slightly wider. Yeah, someone so. just has to shout Jordan Henderson over, really, don't they? And bring him in field a little bit, that's all. That's it, simple as that. Easily done. Um, okay, then, um, as always, let me know your thoughts on, on, on if you think you start. I mean, the big question is in midfield, Emery, Emery Chan, Joe Allen, or, or Lucas Laver, even because Lucas was the one who came off, off the <coughs> bench for him. Thoughts in the comments underneath. I want some score predictions then, gents. This is it. The back. We really care about these now, not just like let's throw around the ones out in pre season. Well, I'm hoping that we get another clean sheet, start the season off with a clean sheet, and therefore I'm going for 2 0. Okay, Jack? Southampton 0, Liverpool 3. All right. I mean, it wouldn't be read that way because we're. It wouldn't, we're no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your prediction for the second half of the season? I was keeping it a little bit secret. Doing oh, that that's that. Yeah. That'd be X Factor in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Last season I tended to go for four ones. I think Lovren might have changed that, so I'm going four now. Right. Okay. Cool. I'm happy with that. Three nil, four nil, and I, I'm therefore going to have to be the voice of reason. One nil Liverpool. And go one nil. Go one nil Liverpool. Um, because. Starting like last season. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that might. I think that might be the way we go. We've seen us blow Dortmund away, but I think it'll be a different kind of test. The Premier League starting, and I, I, I do think we've got to make sure we get points on the ball first. It look hell if we go out of leather and we batter them seven 0 Awesome. 
the most important thing to me is making sure we get to the points on the day. So there you go. Let me know your score predictions uh, in the comments section underneath. Of course, don't forget if you if you if you need to Redman TV to click the subscribe button in the top corner of the screen. It's there, just click it and subscribe. It's totally free. Yeah. Well yeah. The next there, yeah. Yeah. We'll put it there. Yeah. And those who wants to know, let's go back to the trivia question. First game of the season probably would be an interesting one. We've signed loads of their players. It was great. Who was the last person to swap St Mary's for Anfield? Now, the phrasing of this, don't the phrasing. The last person to swap, not player. I'm just a person. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Is that an important phrasing difference, or is it just the way? Yeah. Malcolm Elias. 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 Who was he? He was the um, he was a scout at Southampton who who got Theo Walcott. There we go. So in 2007, uh, he made the move from St Mary's to Anfield. So that's why I'm saying that that's why you wrote person and not not player. Yeah. Well, he's got a sore tooth, man. Leave the poor boy alone. <laughs> Dave's dying behind camera, by the way. So that's all. That's all. Send positive vibes to, to Dave's abscess. And no positive, vibes, negative vibes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and send them through time as well, please. The last player, the last player, to, the last player to move was Peter Crouch in 2005. But that's not what he asked. You see, this is how we started the season. Set us all out. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up, subscribe. If you want to watch more Red Men TV goodness, go to redmentv.com. We've got our full Premier League season preview. We've got a Premier League in general preview as well. There's, all, there's, there's just loads of boss shit. Go on in now and do it and get a month free. Anyway, thanks very much, everyone. Boss, don't vote to the season. Hope you are too. Ta -ra. And obviously, we've seen that uh, you've been playing a little bit of FIFA with Jose Enrique. Mm -hmm. Has he has he has he has he got the better of you, or are you, are you better than him? No, he's just trying. He's just asking me too many times, just to give him some some lessons, you know. So every time I'm free in the afternoon, I just give him some lessons to to teach him how to play FIFA. <laughs> <laughs>